So I was planning on making a series about serverless and GraphQL, but I just implemented Stripe on Saffron. I use Stripe Checkout, and this is set up to be able to create a subscription that runs monthly. Currently, I'm on the test site uh, locally, and I can put in a fake credit card because this is the test mode for Stripe, and I can test out all the stuff that this works. You put a valid uh, date and just a random CVC here, and then we can practice paying on Saffron there and creating a subscription for this particular user. So I just set this up and it was fresh in my mind. So I figured why not just do a quick series on setting this up with Stripe and how you can set this up yourself. So I'm gonna be doing a quick one and then we're gonna be going on to serverless. Now what I'm gonna do in this is not teach you everything about Stripe, but the mere small bit that I have learned about it. So to do this, here's what we're going to do. So I'm first gonna be, and this is the rough structure, of what I'm planning on doing. Um, roughly each one of these I'm thinking is gonna take about a day, maybe a little bit more. So in less than two weeks, we'll be done with this. Um, and here's what we're gonna go over. First, I'm gonna be doing pretty much an architecture video. So I'm gonna be going over what all the pieces we need to set up to be able to take Stripe and how it works when a user actually puts in their credit card because there's more than it looks like is happening. And then secondly, uh, these two bits, if you followed any of my other series, you can skip and use the GraphQL TypeScript boilerplate I've created before or the Airbnb clone one. Uh, but for those of you that don't have a GraphQL server set up, I'm going to do a quick one-two video about setting up that, the minimum you'll need. So setting up login and register, and then also setting that up on the front end. And we're going to do Apollo server two for that. Uh, then we're going to set up Stripe Checkout. So Stripe Checkout is what you saw when I clicked on that button. It's the little pop-up that comes up. I chose to use that because it's easier to set up and doesn't take any kind of coding to set up the uh, that compared to, for example, you'd have to make your own components and whatnot for Stripe Elements if you've heard of that. So that I'll probably do in the future. But for this one, just Stripe Checkout. And then we're going to figure out how to actually send that to the server and create a subscription for them. Then we're gonna talk about how you can handle free trials and differentiating between users that have paid and who have not paid and uh, to like restrict access, for example, if you wanted to. And then we're gonna talk about how you can create a nav bar at the top. This is kind of gonna be something where you can kind of navigate the website, but also be able to see whether a user is logged in, what the status of the user is, that sort of thing, whether they've paid or not. Uh, then we're gonna go over how you can modify someone's credit card. So let's say someone puts in their credit card, but then it expires or they wanna pay with a new credit card. We're gonna go over how you can swap that in. And then lastly, well actually two more, is we're gonna cancel and resubscribe the user. So for example, someone can cancel your subscription. They don't wanna pay for Netflix anymore, so they cancel it. But then a month later, they come back and they resubscribe. We're gonna talk about how you can handle that. And then lastly, we're gonna go over how you can style some of this with your own CSS. And we're gonna use styled components for that. That's gonna be styling, not really the Stripe pieces, but just in general, I've been meaning to do some CSS and styled components videos. So I'm gonna stick that at the end and do that. So that's the plan for this. Uh, and it'll give you an idea of how to use Stripe and how to use it in coordination with GraphQL.